Hey guys, welcome to our channel Footprints Abroad, where I share with you my travel adventures around the world. In this video, I'm going to take you to Sri Lanka, the pearl of the Indian Ocean, where I spent five amazing days exploring its culture, nature, wildlife, and history. So stay tuned and watch till the end. Sri Lanka is a beautiful island nation that has so much to offer to travelers. It has a rich and diverse heritage, a stunning and varied landscape, vibrant and friendly people, and delicious and exotic cuisine. It's also very affordable and easy to travel around, especially if you follow some of the tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you in this video. So, if you're ready, let's go. Day 1. Colombo I arrived in Colombo, the capital and largest city of Sri Lanka, after a short flight from India. I applied for the Avisa online before my trip which was very easy and cost me only $35. I took a taxi from the airport to my hotel, which was about 35 kilon away, and cost me around 15. I stayed at a budget hotel near the city center, which was clean and comfortable and cost me only $10 per night. After checking in, I decided to explore the city by foot. Colombo is a vibrant and cosmopolitan city with a mix of colonial and modern architecture, as well as diverse religious and ethnic communities. I visited some of the main attractions, such as the Gangaramaya Temple, a Buddhist temple with a museum and an elephant orphanage, the Galface Green, a seaside promenade with street food stalls and kite flyers, and the Independent Square, a monument commemorating Sri Lanka's independence from British rule. I also enjoyed some of the local cuisine, such as kotu roti, a dish made of chopped flatbread, vegetables, eggs, and meat, hoppers, crispy bowl-shaped pancakes made of rice flour and coconut milk, and pole sambal, a spicy coconut relish. The food was delicious and cheap, costing me around $5 per meal. Day 2. Sigiriya and Dambula The next day, I took a bus from Colombo to Sigiriya, which was about 180 km away, and cost me around $3. Sigiriya is one of the most iconic sites in Sri Lanka, a massive rock fortress that rises 200 meters above the surrounding plains. It was built by King Kasapa in the 5th century AD as his royal palace and capital. The rock is also famous for its ancient frescoes of beautiful women, known as the Sigiriya Maidens. I climbed up the rock via a series of stairs and metal ladders, passing by the Lion's Paw Gate, a huge stone carving of a lion's paw that marks the entrance to the summit. The climb was challenging but rewarding, as I got to see stunning views of the countryside and the ruins of the palace. The entrance fee to Sigiriya was $30, which was quite expensive but worth it. After descending from Sigiriya, I took another bus to Dambulla, which was about 20 km away and cost me around 0.5 bin dollars. Dambulla is home to another UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Dambulla Cave Temple, a complex of five caves that contain over 150 statues and paintings of Buddha and other deities. The caves date back to the first century BC and are considered one of the most sacred Buddhist sites in Sri Lanka. The entrance fee to Dambulla Cave Temple was $10, which was reasonable for such an impressive site. I spent the night at a guest house near Dambulla, which cost me around $8 per night. Day 3. Candy. On the third day, I took a bus from Dambula to Candy, which was about 80 km away and cost me around 1.55. Candy is the second largest city in Sri Lanka and the last capital of the ancient kings. It is also a cultural and religious center, as it houses the Temple of the Tooth Relic, one of the most sacred places for Buddhists. The temple contains a tooth of Buddha, which is believed to have been brought to Sri Lanka in the 4th century AD. The temple is also famous for its daily ceremonies, where the tooth is displayed to the devotees and visitors. I visited the temple in the morning and paid $10 for the entrance fee. I was lucky enough to witness the morning puja, where the monks chanted and offered flowers and incense to the tooth. The atmosphere was very serene and spiritual, and I felt a sense of awe and reverence. After visiting the temple, I explored some of the other attractions in Kandy, such as the Royal Botanical Gardens, a beautiful park with over 4,000 species of plants and trees, the Kandy Lake, a man-made lake that was built by the last king of Kandy in 1807, and the Kandy City Center, a modern shopping mall with a variety of shops and restaurants. I also enjoyed some of the local specialties, such as kiri bath, a dish made of rice cooked in coconut milk, Wadalapan, a dessert made of coconut milk, eggs, jaggery, and spices, and salon tea, the famous tea produced in Sri Lanka. The food was tasty and inexpensive, costing me around $4 per meal. I stayed at a hostel near the lake, which cost me around $6 per night. Day 4. Nuwara Ilia On the fourth day, I took a train from Kandi to Nuwara Ilia, 
which was about 80 kilometers away and cost me around $2. Nuwara Alaya is a hill station and a popular tourist destination in Sri Lanka, known for its cool climate, scenic landscapes, and tea plantations. It is also called Little England because of its colonial era buildings and gardens. The train ride was one of the highlights of my trip, as I got to see some of the most beautiful views of the mountains, valleys, waterfalls, and tea fields. The train was comfortable and spacious, and I enjoyed chatting with some of the locals and other travelers on board. I arrived in Nuwara Aliyah in the afternoon and checked into a cozy guest house near the town center, which cost me around 12 da alav per night. I then went to explore some of the attractions in Nuwara Elia, such as the Victoria Park, a well-maintained park with colorful flowers and beards, the Gregory Lake, a manmada lake that offers boating and fishing activities, and the Hakala Botanical Garden, a large garden with various types of plants and trees. I also visited some of the tea factories and estates in the area, where I learned about the history and process of tea production in Sri Lanka. I tasted some of the finest Ceylon teas, such as black tea, green tea, white tea, and oolong tea. The tea was aromatic and refreshing, and I bought some packets as souvenirs for my friends and family. I also tried some of the local dishes, such as lampreys, a dish made of rice cooked with meat, vegetables, and spices wrapped in a banana leaf, roti, a flatbread made of wheat flour or coconut flour, and watala palm, a dessert made of coconut milk, eggs, jaggery, and spices. The food was hearty and satisfying, costing me around $6 per meal, Day 5, Gali. On the fifth and final day, I took a bus from Nuwara Aliyah to Gali, which was about 230 kilometers away and cost me around $4. Gali is a coastal city and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, known for its old town and fort, which was built by the Portuguese in the 16th century and later fortified by the Dutch in the 17th century. The fort is a well-preserved example of a colonial-era fortified city with ramparts, bastions, churches, mosques, museums, and mansions. I spent the day walking around the fort admiring the architecture and history of the place. I visited some of the landmarks, such as the Gala Lighthouse, the oldest lighthouse in Sri Lanka, the Dutch Reformed Church, a Protestant church with a Baroque-style interior, and the National Maritime Museum, a museum that displays artifacts related to the maritime history of Sri Lanka. I also enjoyed some of the activities in Gala, such as shopping for souvenirs and handicrafts at the Peddler Street, a street lined with shops and cafes, watching the sunset at the Flag Rock, a rocky outcrop at the southern end of the fort, and relaxing at the Unawatuna Beach a popular beach with golden sand and clear water. I also savored some of the local delicacies, such as fish, ambul thial, a dish made of fish cooked in a spicy and sour sauce, string hoppers, thin noodles made of rice flour and coconut milk, and kiribath with lunu miris, a dish made of rice cooked in coconut milk and served with a spicy onion sambal. The food was fresh and flavorful, costing me around $7 per meal. I stayed at a hostel near the beach, which cost me around $9 per night. That's it for my travel vlog on Sri Lanka. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Sri Lanka is a wonderful country with so much to offer to travelers. It has culture, nature, wildlife, history, 